So, welcome to section 1.1, where we'll be counting symmetries. See it nicely underlined there. All right, but yeah, let's get counting things. It's how we sort of first encounter things in mathematics, so counting's pretty nice. So here we have a perfectly symmetric face. You just flip it over, you can flip it back and forth, and so it has two symmetries, one from when you flip over and one from when you leave it alone. And then here we have an equilateral triangle. Now the equilateral triangle is you can rotate three different ways, including the leaving it alone, and you can also flip it over, and it has a reverse side. And on the reverse side, there's three rotations as well. So in all, you have three rotations on the top and three rotations on the bottom, which makes for six symmetries in all. Hey, hey, we're counting things. But why stop at an equilateral triangle? We could also think about a square or a pentagon, or we could think about a hexagon, or pretty much any polygon you want to. And in fact, I think this is probably a pretty good exercise. How many symmetries do you think a ingon has, meaning a polygon with n sides? So for example, our square is a foregon, our pentagon is a fivegon, and our hexagon is a sixgon. So how many symmetries does each have? Now let's think about a different object, kind of a bumpy hexagon, where we're putting sort of a little bump on each uh, side next to the vertex. You can see it there. Now the cool thing about this is you can rotate it just fine, so you could have your six rotations there, but there's no real way to flip it over. If you flip it over, you're going to have sort of a different shape. So it only has the six rotations. Okay, well that's enough for two dimensions. How about three dimensions? Let's think about regular polyhedra. And the first polyhedra we want to think about is the tetrahedron. We'll sort of work this one out together. Tetrahedron has four sides, one, two, three, four, and it has six edges, which you can kind of see there, and four vertices. And it has 24 symmetries at all, as we'll see. How do we see those 24 symmetries? We can get 12 by rotating, say like holding A constant and then like moving everything else around. But you can also reflect in interesting ways. So right now I'm drawing an orange triangle. And if you reflect through that orange triangle, you can see that you'll switch C and D, but leave A and B alone. And so any two vertices, it turns out, you can exchange this way. There we flip C and D, but you could also flip, say, A and C. How would we do that? Well, let's see, we put a point in the middle of that line and then sort of connect the other two and do a triangle. And then if we reflect through the green triangle, then we're going to exchange A and C while leaving B and D alone. And then we can do that for any pair of vertices we want. And if you can do that for any pair of vertices, it turns out you can permute the four vertices any way that you want. And there's 24 permutations of four things, thus 24 different symmetries. But there's five regular polyhedra in all. There's the tetrahedron, which we just saw, with four sides, draw on the back in orange. Then there's the cube, which we all know, it has six sides. Very, very nice figure, pop, 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 pop. And then there's the octahedron, with eight sides. And yeah, it looks sort of like that. And yeah, we can draw on the back as well. All good. And then we get to some bigger ones. These first three are all pretty easy to draw. And uh, now we're going to really test my artistic skill. We have the dodecahedron. Dodecahedron has 12 sides. Dodeca means 12, 10 plus 2. And then here I'm drawing in the back of the dodecahedron. And it's a little bit hard to see, but if you count all of the sides, it turns out there's 12 sides. Finally, there's the icosahedron, which has 20 sides, all of which are little triangles. And here I'm drawing the front with 10, and then the back you sort of have to imagine because it's hard to draw and will look really bad. So question, how many symmetries does each regular polyhedron have? We know it's 24 for the tetrahedron. What about the other four? Okay, one more thing. Let's think about tiling again. So when we tile things, here we're going to be sort of tiling the plane with equilateral triangles. You're going to have to pretend those are equilateral because I'm kind of drawing this freehand. But you can kind of get the idea. 
You've got all sorts of equilateral triangles there, and you can imagine them going on and on and on out to infinity. And there are all of these different lines here, and if I were to flip the picture over any of those lines, then it would carry all of the equilateral triangles back onto each other. You can flip over any of those lines. There's infinitely many lines, so that means infinitely many symmetries. Likewise, there's these translation symmetries. You can go as far as you want. 